My notes. Okay, so I'm going to talk. My name is Anton. I actually was born and raised in Ukraine and Europe, so I am different from the get go. And I moved here in '91, and I've been here in Fort Wayne since. Um, I've got the chance to travel the country, and I got a chance to travel back to homeland, and uh, I've experienced a lot of neat things. And I'm going to talk to you guys about how to turn your passion into a business and how I did it, and maybe you guys can learn a few things from it. So I'm going to try to be brief, and uh, hopefully you guys can pick up a few things. Um, since I was about 15 years old, I was fascinated by business, and I was fascinated by success. I was fascinated by people that are willing to have the freedom to do whatever they want with their lives, whether it's travel, be with their families, um, just the freedom of, of what they achieve is success. And success is different to everybody. It's not necessarily just money. So it just depends on who you are and what you're after and what you're looking for. But I was always fascinated by it. I decided to read a lot of books. I studied. I read uh, Entrepreneur Magazine almost every month since then. And I just always wanted to work for myself. I never knew what it was going to be, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. And uh, there's just too many careers out there, too many jobs, too many things that we can do, and we don't have enough time to experience all of them, to try all of them out. We don't have enough money to go to 20 different uh, colleges to be able to experience all the different fields. And uh, we're probably going to fail more than we succeed until we actually figure out what we want to do. Uh, a lot of people are scared to do that. A lot of people are scared to fail. A lot of people are scared to make mistakes. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to make a lot more mistakes than you're going to actually make success happen. And it's just how you accept them and how strong you are and willing to accept them. But uh, here's what I've learned and what helped me. And maybe this will help some of you guys. And I'm not telling you this is the right way. And I'm not telling you this is the wrong way. This is just how I did. Um, I was always told that your worst ink pen is, your be is better than your best memory, which means anything that you write down, you will remember if you read it at some point in time. I also was told that you think the most when you're in the shower and right before you go to sleep. So I took a lot of showers and took a lot of naps. <laughs> but no, that's a joke. But um, I, uh, what I did is I wrote down three to four hundred different fun things that I actually enjoy doing. Literally, just weird things. You know, jumping on the trampoline, that's fun, so I wrote it down. You never know, because sometimes when you look back at those things, you'll actually figure out that a few of those things may actually make sense for a business model or your passion. And that happened to me. Uh, out of those three or four hundred things, I did have some goofy things in there. I actually still have that list. But what I noticed about me is that I'm creative. I love designing things. I like modern, futuristic stuff, artsy stuff, uh, technology. And uh, my first project was a car. I actually did a lot of fiberglass work and converted a car and, and did some stuff, made it one of a kind. I actually found out that I love to be diverse from the, from the general public. I like to be different. Obviously, the first idea didn't quite go with my business plan so of, of what I'm doing now, so that didn't quite consider as what people consider success. That was a failure because I did something, it wasn't it, and it didn't work. Well, to me, I learned from it. I learned that's not what I want to do, and I veered away from it into another idea. I wanted to design some furniture, and make it out of fiberglass and LED lights, and make it really futuristic, modern, go to New York, build really neat stuff. Obviously, that didn't work out either because I didn't like the concept of the asbestos and the health issues and so forth. So I kept going, and there's a lot of people at this point would say, you know, I give up. I'm just going to go fill out applications and work somewhere and so forth. Well, I didn't give up. I wanted to keep going at it. So one day I decided to take a black tie and I put some crystals on it. And I went out. I never had so many compliments in my entire life as I did that night. And I didn't quite, it didn't get to me. I was just, it was just exciting to be different. I'm, just, I'm wearing a cool tie. Everyone's liking it. But then I started to do some research. And after two or three months of doing extensive research, I realized that, man, this is interesting. I'm really enjoying this, so maybe I should look into it a little further. I literally spent three, four months, seven days a week, probably 15, 16 hours a day, doing nothing but research, studying, looking all over the internet, and I was working with my best friend Google, who taught me a lot of things. And uh, a lot of people don't know where to go, where to start, but I'm going to tell you, anytime you guys have questions, Google's always there to, uh, to help you. And I think that's a word now that's in a dictionary, right, Sharona? Google. I Googled it. That's actually like in the dictionary now, so it's kind of cool. And then I met an interesting person that's in this room, uh, Albert Einstein, I mean John Dickmeyer, who's really intelligent, and he actually sat, I sat down with him and I said, I don't know where I'm going with this, man. I have no idea. You need to show me a few things, and you need to tell me a few things. And you're really smart, so help me out. And he gave me some direction, and he helped out, and there's a lot of people out there that will. And after doing a little more research, I realized I really do want to start a clothing line. I think I have a niche market for something I'm doing. So basically, at that point in time, I started to write a business plan, and I had no idea what I was doing. No idea. I just started writing all kinds of stuff out, just pages of notes and all kinds of ideas, design ideas. But you know, one thing I really liked is that I was in love with the idea. I could spend hours doing it. I could not eat for hours. 
I could not sleep for hours. I didn't sleep at night. I just, I was so excited. And that's when I knew I had my passion and that I'm actually pursuing it. It's really hard to say that, oh, my notes went away. It's really hard to say that, that maybe there's another passion out there for me, but I don't care because this is what I really enjoy doing. And most people, they're afraid to chase after passions and dreams because they get distracted and they think that, um, that when they fail once or twice, that it's the end of the world, they shouldn't do it again, they shouldn't try again. But uh, I'm here to tell you that I have failed way more than I have succeeded, but I don't see it as failure at all. A lot of people see it as I messed up, I need to redo everything, I need to you know, restructure my whole entire plan. But actually I see it as a learning curve, and all of us in here can remember a few times where we're upset with you know, our results of something that we've done. But it's going to happen a lot more than you succeed. You just have to be strong to know that you have to keep at it, keep pushing for it, and you'll get there. So when I started writing my plan, I finally realized that there's a lot of stuff in line that I need to do, but the best way I've learned how to get there is I make a timeline. If I have a goal that I need to do something by the end of October, I envision myself being at the end of October in what I did to get there. So I kind of go backward, and I tell myself, what is it that I need to do before now at the end of October? And then I tell myself, I'm there, what did I just do? And backtrack, back and forth, back and forth, you take notes, you cross things out, you're never 100% right or perfect, but you will learn a few things from it and you will gain a lot of knowledge. And eventually, by having that plan in place, you're going to be a lot further than if you just did nothing. So I'll tell you that there's, there's a lot to it, but I used a lot of Google. I used a lot of YouTube. There's videos on YouTube that will teach you almost anything. And I do mean almost anything. So I learned how to like sew and still learning how to do a lot of that stuff on YouTube. And then Amazon. It's got more books than we'll ever be able to read. So. And I don't like reading. I actually like to listen to them on audio. So um, maybe that's just me. But everybody has different ways of doing this. But th this is just some of the things that I did. And then Photoshop. I had to use Photoshop, so I went ahead and went on YouTube. And there's tons of videos to learn how to do that. So you can't be scared to learn because the information is out there. And it's all on your internet. If you don't have internet, go to Starbucks. They give you free Wi-Fi. And I'm pretty sure everybody has a smartphone these days. You can at least get online with that, plug in your headphones, and then you can sit at Starbucks and watch videos. There's hours and hours and hours worth of videos that you guys can all look through in any creative field or anything that you want to do. Everybody that spoke out today, all, the, all these great speakers, there's lots of motivational stuff as well online. So if you get discouraged, hop on YouTube and watch a couple videos. I do a lot actually. So then uh, progressing from there, I started with the tie because a tie is kind of universal, one size fits all. It's, it's not pants where you have a thousand different fits. I decided to start with the tie and I decided to start researching a website called Alibaba that actually my friend Jamal told me about. And uh, from there I decided to, to start small. I went to China, I started going through runs, I started going through uh, some sampling and so forth. And I wanted to learn one thing at a time and kind of how it goes from there. And then eventually I started to uh, kind of grow that concept and then I started to get into pattern making and shirts and pants and I'm wearing a full outfit that I made. So it, it's, it, and a lot of people are like, how did you do that? You gotta be so smart. I don't know if I'm really, I mean, maybe a little bit, but I'm not super smart. It's just dedication and willpower. And I can promise you that anybody with the dedication and willpower can almost do anything. And I've seen it. And I've seen a lot of videos. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of movies. A lot of that's true. And a lot of that is a lot more dedication than it is anything else. So those are just some factors that I have, and I've been through, a, I mean, I've progressed further. I've finished my website, I've got social media I've done, I've got a fashion show, I was just accepted into Midwest Fashion Week, which will be next month, but none of this was gonna ever happen if I didn't take a step forward to do something. And it's always one step at a time. You're never gonna actually climb the whole, you know, they say you don't climb the whole ladder without one step at a time. So corny, but true. So just keep that in mind, and I'm gonna keep it short and simple. I know you guys have one more speaker, and everybody's kind of bored, so. Right? Yeah. Okay, so that's my speech.